this time on Custom Works, we're looking at how to French light and we're going all asymmetric on the grill. Let's get to the workshop. So then, after the red fibre paste, and that really did get it all a lot stronger, um, I've just gone over it in some filler. Um, obviously this filler is unsanded, but there it is. It's rock solid, um, it will be glass from the back, so all those pieces are made one. Um, I'll glass actually inside the fender, and uh, that will make that a lot stronger and a lot better. Moving forward, obviously this will all be sanded down, but at the minute with this car, I'm not bothered about smooth filler. Smooth filler takes a lot of time. What I'm bothered about is the shape and the look and is it right? And just at this, I can see, oh yeah, this is gonna look good. The light that's going in here is the 59 Cadillac tail light. I've got to admit, this is not my favorite light. I've also got to admit, in a way, it is my favorite light because it's awesome. I love this chrome bit and everything. But I really do think it takes a bit of like inventive Frenching to sit that in there. What I've done here, I've built this bit and then every single person in the world knows I bought this bit. But I think what you've got to do is put enough around a 59 Caddy light and do something a bit more special with it. And then it doesn't just look like something you bought from the parts shop and stuck on. If I was just to stick it on, now that's just not acceptable. I'll try and do something a little bit crazy with it. And I do think, I do think with the 59 Caddy Tail Light, there's a lot of crazy things that could be done with it. 
I've got quite a few on this, and believe me, this isn't going to be um, the level of the madness and where the madness ends. I'm going to go even crazier with these things and try and use them in a totally different way. Yeah, like I say, we all know you can just buy them off eBay for a couple of quid. So um, careful how you use them because they can look good or they can just look like shiny trinkets you've glued on. Okay then, so now let's brace ourselves, but at the same time open our minds and take a look at that asymmetric 60s grill. The person I'm building the truck for said he really wants a wild style 60s truck. And when we were batting around ideas and he came up with the idea of why don't we do some asymmetric stuff, just like they did back in the 60s. And this is something I've wanted to do just forever because that asymmetric 60s style, there is no more middle finger up to normal cars than an asymmetric car. It's just mind blowing. So I was super excited and it took me a few nights of doodling and uh, drawing pictures to find a way to make that thing of having two canted lights here and then sort of what am I going to do with the rest of it because if you've got lights in the right hand side of your grill then it's great you know what you've got to do on the left hand side more lights on this not so simple and also there's problems with like MOT and stuff but I'm going to come to that in a future episode for today, what I'm going to be doing, I just want to get that shape from my sketch onto the front of the car. Yes, there's going, to, there's going to be adjustments in the future, but I'm going to get it done. Okay then, so I know, I know that this whole sort of asymmetric lot is going to be divisive. I know some people ain't going to like it. I think it's just an amazing idea and it comes back to what I always think about customising and hot rodding. You build a hot rod, you build a custom, and absolutely everyone loves it. Well, you've just not really built a hot rod or a custom, have you? Because it's gotta be the freak of the street. It's the weird one. It's that odd car that like, what the hell is that? And that's what we're gonna make right here today. Okay then, so, here we are. We're starting to do this whole, uh a centric style front end with four canted lights at that end and we're going to wrap right around that corner and it's going to be wild. A little bit hard to actually um, explain because this thing's going to be mad. Um, anyway, this is how it comes together.
fine. Now I've got the form for all of that and the foam is just how I want it. I'm gonna cover that in aluminium foil, ready to be glassed. And of course, as always, first up, I'm gonna stick all the resin on with contact adhesive, and then I'm gonna go over the resin. Stop things slipping about, makes it all a bit tidier and easier. Everything on the front of the truck is um, foamed and then covered in tape, and we are ready for some fiberglass. We've got this cool asymmetric bumper, asymmetric grill for canted lights. This really is full future custom. Of course, future from like the 50s, not the future now. Who's going to come out with this now? No one. But in that retro futurist sort of look, this is looking pretty good. Um, obviously, there's bits like this where there's still just a lot of expanding foam where I've extended the bumper, but I will build that up over a couple of days and then sand it all down. But a lot of this is now ready for fiberglass. And things like this in the front of the bonnet, it's quite soft. And I did lean on it and shove it out. So it's time to get some glass on all of this. So, to the fiberglass and beyond. So, I've had a few problems with fibreglassing and getting tight corners on it. And what happens is, you try to get it to go round the corner, you get like a lump here and a lump there. And I really need this to be flat. And also I've been doing quite a lot of upside down fibreglassing recently. And I've found that with a bit of filler over the fibreglass, you can put filler over the fibreglass and it stiffens it up. Of course, you want to be taking most of the filler off. It just to sit there to hold its shape on tight corners and then go over that with fiberglass resin. And this seems to hold it in at that nice sharp angle. You know, obviously the resin comes over and it's got it all. So that's what I'm going to try on this. I did it the other day on, funny enough, on a bicycle I'm building. A two-man bicycle, two people ride the bicycle and it's got a thousand watt sound system on. I'll show it you when it's done. But I did this on the boom box that I made for that and uh, it worked really well. So I'm going to do it here and hopefully we won't get any of that ripple or bubbling along that nice sharp edge. It's the next day and everything has dried off pretty good. Uh, everything's looking nice and solid, everything's super sort of stiff and dry. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go around all of this and tidy up all of these ragged edges. And maybe, maybe, I'll put some filler on it. Looking pretty good though. Done a bit of sanding. Some of this is looking a bit more, you know, the right sort of thing. And the front's looking quite good with this sort of long cyclops eye. But I'm doing this thing again. If we look at this piece of plastic, we can see there that there's quite a gap behind it. Huge gap there. That is quite a nice line. That really subtle bow to it. So just like I did uh, the other week, on the rear fender, I'm going to use this and I'm going to backfill down here with filler and that will give me this nice curve. But also I'm going to fill underneath and that will give me the continuation of this swage line, which is on the F100 truck. And I want to keep that, I want to keep that round like a you know barrier for the madness. So nothing comes above there, well, on this side anyway. Let's get some filler and fill that gap. I 
I've removed that piece of plastic and um, this is what we've got. We have got this line in here, which is our straight and good line, which will bring that line through and strike it right across the front of the car. Now this is a little bit like up that way and out that way, but it's more this, it's this corner right in there. It's just absolute of infinite value in this job. Um, and once we've sanded this ridge off, we'll be able to snow plow up to this and down to this bit. And don't forget that this back edge as well gives us that lovely lazy curve across the front, which um, that kind of plastic just seems to just fall into. There it is. So let's go a bit more Bondo on and see how our strut line looks. I've got the level in there, this nice line, and it's looking pretty good. But now I need to smooth out this bit. Look, there's craters and all sorts. So what I've done here is I've sanded this line about straight and this line about straight. And what I'll do, I'll put the filler spreader on like this. And then it will follow my two straight lines covering up all of this and giving me a nice sort of radius in there that will be built off of, you know, the bend of the spreader. And now if I want a sharper corner, I can go one finger. Want it a bit less, I can go two, such as this. So one makes it sharper, two fingers a bit less, three, be even less. So that's what I'll be doing and I'll be filling from here back to here. So it's not in the video, but what I, I also did at this point, once I had those big curves around that front piece, once I had all of those glass, and they're, they're thick fiberglass, you know, that gives some real structure rigidity. Then I was able to cut the slot of the front fender out so that that whole piece is now um, open. And it's, it's those two big, thick chunks of fiberglass that hold that. So it's got that sort of cantilever effect to the front. Okay then, so here we go. This is the basic shape for the grill. I'm really happy. It's absolutely nuts. There might be some work that I do just around this area. I might just taper this back into the body a little bit more. So I think it sticks out a bit too much there. That'll be a simple pie cut, redo that and then re-glass it. But it really is looking great. And I'm, I think, I think I'm on the way to actually pulling off the asymmetric look. Right, so that's it for this week. Don't forget, buy a t-shirt. The Etsy store thing's right in the banner thing. You can walk around all summer. It will be ready for the summer. You can get it now, get it pressed, and get it dry cleaned, ready for that day in the summer when you're walking along with your iron sleeve. Oh yeah. Also don't forget, click that like button, click the other buttons, the bell end whatever it's called and the other ones um, and you'll get regular updates and all of that and also leave some comments down below so that's it another week another custom works is over but in seven days time there will be another and until then thank you very much and good night <laughs>